Whenever I make a video about a desktop environment or a distribution which features their own, I always get at least one comment about my thoughts on tiling window managers. And not without reason. If you watch a video of someone who is used to using them, then you clearly see on why it's appealing. It's very work focused since you don't have any fancy or more accurate unnecessary animations. You always see most of or even all of your open windows and interact with them very efficiently. The reason why I have avoided this topic for so long was that while they are very efficient and even good looking, it's quite a drastic change for someone who is used to work with a, a traditional Windows and macOS behavior. But that changes today and we're going to take a look at some tiling window managers that some of you already use. I will be going over some general information, the looks and how each feel out of the box. And of course, we are also going to cover the overusability perspective for those who are not yet familiar with tiling managers at all. But before we do that, let me quickly remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like and if you like more Linux content just like this one, then you should also subscribe to the channel. Ok, so let's start off with what even is a tiling window manager? And I think it's best if we go even further. What is a window manager? If you are already a Linux user or are new to the scene, then you might already know that the Linux desktop has a lot of desktop environments to choose from. Each desktop environment also needs a compositor, which you can imagine composites whatever is on the screen at any given moment. A window manager in today's sense, with Wayland and all that, is part of these compositor implementations and is responsible for drawing each separate window on the screen. Mutter from GNOME and Kwin from KDE are so called floating window managers, since by default windows can float above or beneath others and move freely. Tiling window managers on the other hand divide or so called tile your screen space and each tile gets populated with one window. These tiles don't need to be equal however. You can have bigger ones, wider ones and of course full screen ones. The biggest advantage of course being that you don't have to look for windows hidden behind other windows, since everything is always drawn on your screen. Now tiling isn't something new and even floating window managers and even operating systems do have certain tiling compatibilities. But tiling window managers take it to the next level. And there are a lot of options out there, but in today's video I'm going to stick to those that are either being used by you or just general popular in the Linux community. That being i3 or more accurately its similar behaving counterparts Way, Awesome and Herbstluftwm, because I find it funny. I'm deliberately not covering DWM since you have to compile it yourself and it's therefore not really ideal for most people. Ok, let's start off with Sway. The first thing that you will probably notice is, there isn't anything there. Yeah, you have some buttons at the top, but you can't really do much with them. And that's probably the biggest change in usability when it comes to tiling window managers. By default, most don't really rely on mouse movement to open or close apps. Therefore, you need to use hotkeys. Now in Sway, we can open a terminal by pressing super plus enter. From here, we can open a program like Firefox and it automatically splits my screen equally. I'm going to launch a couple more to showcase you the tiling. Now we can reorder and resize the windows to our liking or quit them with Super Shift Q. If you don't want to open the terminal to launch a program or to find them easier, you can use Super D to search for them. Now Sway also supports a ton of customization options and you can also shape it more to your liking by editing its config files. Especially changing your desktop's resolution might be important. Let's move on to Awesome. Now I installed it on a standard Debian 12 build without any additional desktop environment and this is how it came by default. Right away it for once looks a bit different but also features a program selection window in the top left. You see some KDE applications here since I installed KDM for my login manager. Yeah, I'm calling it that. But nonetheless, awesome is in that regard easier to use for newcomers. Again, let's open up some software. As you can see, one big difference already is the way how applications get displayed. Programs like browsers tend to launch in full screen while others don't. 
Windowed programs can change your positioning and size with some templates in the top right, which is quite convenient. Anyway, by default it features a similar usability experience. However, this window manager, as well as many others, don't support Wayland yet. That might not be an issue for you, but for gamers with multiple monitor setups this could be a big deal. The same goes for Herbstluft by the way. Speaking of, let's move on to that. Like you might have already realized that I don't go in very deep into the details of each window manager and part of the reason is that most of them feel identical. Herbstluft for example behaves a bit like Sway, but also has some notches from Awesome by default. The key differences between tiling window managers are that some are considered static or dynamic and how they are configured or talked to. You got to understand that a lot of them were created to ease the configuration process. But how one person does it does not automatically mean that another person also likes it. So it's subjective. In the end you can try configuring a few of them and stick with the one that feels the easiest for you. Customization is a huge part of Linux and you can essentially form all of the three into the same operating system. And some in the Linux community have achieved quite impressive results. That being said, even with all of the advantages like visual clarity and increased productiveness, tiling is not for everyone. Even for someone like me who generally prefers a very fast operating system, I'm personally not a huge fan of them. My reasoning being that since I am bound to use a lot of graphical apps, it's a bit off-rowing to use something that is that vastly different. Personal preference and all that. Luckily, for people like me, there are some middle ground solutions. PopOS Cosmic Shell has great tiling functionality and so does KDE Plasma. I do believe that tiling window managers do have their place and I can't really seem to say anything bad about them. Except maybe they should auto-open their documentation when starting it for the first time. It's quite a hassle to google something on your phone since you can't figure out how you can start a browser on your PC. Alright, that already sounded like a sort of conclusion. Anyway, in short, tiling window managers are great for those who want to be as productive as possible, keep that minimalistic design or want to get most out of their screen space. However, they are definitely not for everyone. I personally won't be using one in the near foreseeable future, however that is just a poor preference and objectively speaking I can't seem to find anything bad about them. If you like this workflow then go for it. And if you've liked this video as well then don't forget to show it and also subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. While well, I'm continuing to finish up my dream setup, including a Proxmox server, the video is right here. You can also check out my other videos on my YouTube channel right here. I'm sure you'll find something interesting. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.